Hello, everyone. My name is David Schramm from Compressors and uh, Bendix. I invite you all to come in if you have a second. Stop by. Barbara's giving out free T-shirts here. We're going to talk about compressors for a little bit, uh, go over some diagnostics. Uh, as I said, my name is David Schramm. I'm from the compressor group at Bendix. And at Bendix, we like to think of the compressor as kind of the heart and soul of the whole air treatment system. So we've got a couple ideas, tips, and tricks to help you guys with some of the diagnostics, some of the problems you may experience. I know everyone knows compressors, right? It's the pump that fills up the air tanks that allows the brakes and other pneumatic systems to operate on your vehicle. But a lot of times when there's an issue with the charging system, compressors get the blame. And a lot of times, more often than not, it's actually one of the supporting pieces of that air charging system, be it the governor or purge valve or something else, and not necessarily the compressor. So we want to make really sure that the compressor is the root cause of the problem. Now, uh, with the compressor, unless you have, you know, oil and fluid and air coming out the side of the compressor, and obviously, yeah, you have a compressor issue, there's a couple things we'd rather have you take a look at to get those kind of limited and much uh, less expensive and easier fixes, right? So the first thing you're going to want to look at is the air discharge and the air inlet hoses. You want to make sure they're free of kinks, excessive wear. Uh, for instance, I've got a discharge hose here, and this one's pretty well beat up, right? We have a kink. We have some excessive wear. So again, something this obvious, you're going to want to replace that hose. The next thing, if the outside of the hoses look fine, you're going to want to take a look at the inside of the hoses themselves. Now, to do that, you'll probably have to remove the hoses. But what you're looking for is down the inside, the ID of the hose, you're looking for any debris or buildup that would restrict your airflow and, and also cause problems. It could be anything from carbonization to uh, ice, ice if you're in a, uh, you know, a very, very cold environment. But the idea, again, is that we want to understand those two pieces parts first. At this point, we look for the ESS piston, right, in that unloader valve. A lot of times, the guys I'm telling you, they'll just take the kit and they'll switch out that ESS piston. It's a relatively simple operation, and we find that the new piston kits are performing much more robust and loss lasting longer than even a lot of the OE pieces. So again, that's a quick fix. If you don't want to necessarily pull out those pistons, you can always check that chamber by finding the small air line that goes from the head of the compressor to the governor removing it from the governor's side and hooking it up to a small air tank that happens to be charged up that you might have in your shop. If you see that tank starting to lose pressure, then you have a problem with the piston and you're going to have to replace those anyway. If you're in with an ESS piston and taking a look at it, what you really want to do, and here I have a piston for you, is you want to take a close look at the O-rings here. The O-rings and then also the very seat at the bottom. If there's debris and buildup along this, it'll prevent it from seating and therefore prevent it from sealing. So those are the two things you need to worry about. Once you put it all back together, you should be in good shape. Now I say that because that's about 99% of the issues. Let's say you've done that, you've switched out the ESS piston, you still have problems because you in your mind, you know, you're the driver, you're the owner, you know about how long it should take and you're still having slow buildup or, or will not build air problems. Well, in that case, what you want to take a look at, perhaps if it's not mechanically in here, you may actually have an undersized compressor. When they build the compressor and then they put the compressor on the line in the factory, obviously it's matched up with the engine and the vehicle that it's going to go on. And so they have some specification, some understanding of about how much air that vehicle is going to need. However, until you get your vehicle out on the road and you start to actually beat up on it every day, that's when you really determine how much air your vehicle requires. And you may find, in fact, that you're not getting enough air into your system. What Bendix has put together to help with that is this very simple chart. And what we have here is basically you're just going to walk down the number of axles, how many pneumatic uh, p other pieces you have, whether it's a lift in the back or anything like that, so you can tally up points, basically, for how much air you're going to require for that vehicle. Once you've done that, it's a very simple matter of taking that number, matching it up with uh, the approximate vocation of what type of vehicle you have, and this will recommend what size air compressor you need, whether you need something with 16 CFM, 32 CFM, because I tell you, if you have an undersized compressor, the compressor is going to run more than it should. It's going to run hotter than it should, and your life is going to be drastically shorter than it should. So again, if you've done all the basic checks, and you as a driver operator think, man, you know, I, I'm replacing these compressors at an ungodly rate, you know, once a year, every nine months, whatever, you might want to take a good look to see if you have the right size compressor for that piece. 
And speaking of the right size compressor, what I also like to talk about a little bit is our remanufactured compressors. A lot of times people out in the reman market and they're looking for a Bendix compressor and they think if it's a blue compressor, oh, I have a Bendix compressor. And sometimes that's not the case. Just because it's painted blue doesn't necessarily mean it's a Bendix genuine compressor. So what you're going to want to do is check on the box and also on the name tag itself to make sure you guys are getting what you paid for. You know, that being said, we've been approached by our customers to kind of expand our remanufactured offering, and we are all, uh, now starting to go into an all makes. You know, we're starting to do some other, other uh, products that normally are done by the competitors, but our customers still need them. So this way we can provide to our customer not only our pieces, but some of the other pieces, because we have such a good reputation and quality and success built up. Plus, not only that, but when they call for that, they have all the service of the blue team, they have the technical support, they have customer service support, and even warranty and core issues we can help them out with. So again, that's just some way we were looking at trying to help out and do more for our customer. The other last thing I wanted to talk about is a new compressor we have. We're very proud of it, Bendix. Typically, an air compressor is designed for a specific engine. This flange area is designed to go on one engine and one engine only. What we've done here with this new compressor, this is our universal mount SAE compressor, is we've gone with a very standard mounting. And you'll find this mounting on many engines and a lot of transmissions, as a matter of fact. So now we can provide a compressed air solution to a lot of our other customers, even outside the trucking industry. The trucking industry uses it. If you need extra air, we can, we can apply this. But even in industries outside of our normal scope, we can now apply and help these guys out with some of these compressed air solutions. Uh, really, that's all I had to talk about today for you guys. I'd be more than happy to answer some questions. Uh, I want to remind you that we have a break school online. We also have Bendix.com online for information. The break school gives you a lot of little tutorials, videos, and so forth to help educate on not only compressors, obviously, but air treatment pieces, valves, a lot of the electronics you see out around here. There's a lot of different things, and I encourage you all to go online if you get the chance and learn more about compressors and Bendix in general, right? Thank you for your time, everyone.